Now, we've been talking about boycotts a lot, and I wanted to look at them just a little bit more closely. How do you get people to agree not to purchase something? You have to organize, you have to identify, and you have to get the word out. Now, Americans had been boycotting since 1765 during the Stamp Act crisis. During that time, newspapers printed bold advertisements for boycotting. They said, save your money and save your country. Some specific shops were listed, and also specific names would be listed in those papers as well. And the list of boycotted items was quite long. Snuff, which was a type of tobacco. Mustard, loaf sugar, muffs and furs, boat anchors, fire engines, broad linens, carriages, house furniture, hats and gloves, and shoes and nails, thread, lace, buttons, plates, clocks, watches, silverware, starch, china, silk, cotton, gauze, linseed oil, glue, malt liquors, and cheese, and of course, tea. Many colonists signed pledges to promise boycotting these and other items, and these sheets were distributed to many colonies to encourage even more boy boycotting. Thus, an early form of Made in America was at work. Importantly, it included the belief that a common person could make a sacrifice for their country and make a difference even across the Atlantic. The boycotts surprisingly worked well, even though not every colony and not every region participated. British imports fell by almost 50% overall in most places. The political letters had far less impact, but with the boycotts, they were listened to. For think about it this way, not only were the Americans talking about these boycotts, but also the merchants in London, who were often very wealthy, were feeling the sting of the boycotts, and they added their voice about calls for, calls for repeal. The boycotts also united the colonists. Other people felt what you were going through. And these changes in spending habits were really felt not only did the British merchants feel the sting, but also the colonials felt the inconvenience. They had wanted to dress and to act and to live like the British and like people in London. But the boycott caused them to change their habits. And so Parliament would often reverse its laws simply because of these boycotts. Now women were particularly targeted by boycotting. In this time, women were seen to be responsible for the household. That is, they were responsible for all the things that the household need, purchasing items especially. And thus, how a family lived was impacted by the boycott. One article said that women should, quote, love your country much better than fine things. That article went on to claim that dressing down instead of in pomp was a better, was a better way to attract a good patriotic man. It was more attractive. Another quote said that the spinning wheel could more influence the affairs of men and it would also produce a golden age. Women were, quote, bringing about the political salvation of an entire continent. Newsprint told stories of women manufacturing thread, yarn, and linens. And women also began spinning matches and quilting bees where they would gather together and for hours, sometimes even 12 hours, they would spin. And then they would tell the newspapers how much product they had made. And thus, the production of cloth was a sign of patriotism. Women's apparel was also mentioned. True female par patriots, papers argued, showed their conduct by how they despised to dress with the manufacture of a colony, of a country, I'm sorry, that was trying to enslave the Americans. And thus, homespun clothing became popular. And homespun clothing that lacked ribbons, and this was called the homespun movement. Women's circles were noted for drinking tea. So when, it, when tea was boycotted, the papers praised the virtues of women who went without the very popular British tea that was called Bohia. Instead, papers promoted local American teas like Labrador and Evergreen. Now, those teas were not nearly as tasty as Bohia. So it was a sacrifice. In fact, in Edenton, North Carolina, 51 women wrote and agreed to only drink local American tea. And they sent their agreement to the British press which was printed in London papers. But the London papers mocked them 
for their decision. Thus, housewives were using their purchasing responsibilities to support the patriot cause. The policies had been made by men, but they were enacted by women. My main point in this lesson is this. A boycott is only good if enough people agree. Thus, it was important to know exactly what was to be boycotted, for how long, and by whom. Newsprint was key in this time period, as well as the Organization of Women and Commoners.